Hello, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Hi, unboxing and review of the R36 SAS Retro Game Console. You are about to find out whether the R36 SAS was worth buying, how good it really is in terms of usability and performance. Inside the box you won't find much, other than the console itself, and a USB-A to USB-C charging cable alongside a small user manual which is hidden under the plastic piece, which holds the handheld within the box. The device is quite nicely protected laying firmly in the plastic mold, and it is both a cutout temporary foam protector laying on top of it, and a piece of foil guarding the screen during the transport. After removing both of these and taking out the USB cable, we're left with the R36S in its full glory. The device is small, but not quite pocketable. It's also not that heavy, and it feels really good in hands. A few interesting details are noticeable right away. On the left side of the device there is a power button and a reset button, alongside with a micro SD card slot labeled TF2 game which is used just for storing the game files. The Holo S is stored on another card, in the right-hand side slot, which we'll see in a while. The TF2 game slot card, is the one you'll be taking out of the device to load and import new games on the R36S. It's a really simple process which essentially only requires copying your legally sources ROM files onto the micro SD using a card reader. That's it. On the right side of the device you can find the second micro SD card slot, this time label TFTOS. This one is used for storing your OS, which is the Linux-based Dark OS by default. More on that in a short while. Also, look at the photo above again, and notice the inset analog sticks. They are placed in such a way so that they are at the same level as all of the other buttons on the front panel, and that's a really good design feature. Not only it makes the device more pocketable, but for me it also makes it much more pleasant to use. There isn't much to be said about the volume buttons, other than maybe they could have been bigger if I were to nitpick a little. Now let's see the bottom of the device. Two USB-C ports on the bottom, yes, one for charging labeled DC, and the second one for data transfer this one labeled OTG, and between them a 3.5mm headphone jack. A really nice thing to have, at least for me. You may also notice two speaker grills on both sides of the USB ports. Don't be fooled, there is only one mono speaker on the device, and thankfully it's in a much better place, on the front panel, between the D-pad and the XY80 buttons, and it does sound pretty decent, even on higher volume levels. Now the most important thing, the controls, and the first thing I noticed right away is how stiff they were compared to other devices, while the more stiff controls felt really good for me, I see how people who enjoy more complex fighting games with multi-button combo sequences could have other things to say. All in all, I didn't find any major issues here. Needless to say, both the D-pad and the XYAB buttons operate silently, as they should. The select and start buttons press down with a click, and so does the function button labeled FN. In the default configuration, with the older versions of the Arc OS firmware, the FN button doesn't do anything and cannot be assigned as a hot or a key shortcut. However there is a rather neat fix for that. The analog sticks, or thumbsticks as some would call them, as you've already seen are neatly inset, which is a great design feature. They work very smoothly and feel really great, and they also can be pressed down with an audible click. These are honestly the part of this whole device I found the most satisfying to use. Talking about satisfying, the back trigger buttons, so the R1, R2 and L1, L2 controls do have a satisfying click to them, and for me it's a little bit loud. With that said, they work without any trouble and don't wiggle around or squeak after being pressed down more firmly. The first thing I'll say is that showing the actual colors and contrast of this display proved to be quite hard for my camera, and the screen looks much better in person, trust me on this one. If I'm being honest, while this is a simple 640x480, 3.5 inches panel, its quality really is kind of impressive. The display is sharp, vibrant, has great viewing angles for a device of this caliber, and half of the pleasure of playing retro games on this device comes from this little IPS panel quality. And before you ask, I didn't notice any significant screen tearing, so that's a great plus. 
After doing a quick OS update, I've tested all of the emulators available on the device by default with quite a few popular games. Here is what I learned. There are basically no performance issues when playing games up to the PS1 era, with most, if not all PlayStation 1 titles running at full speed. As all the devices of the similar type the R36S handheld can run systems such as Capcom System I, 2 and 3, Main 2003, PC Engine, Super Famicom, NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy Classic, Color and Advance, NDS, Mega Drive, Dreamcast, Gamma Gear, Neo Geo, PS1, PSP, PC game ports via Portmaster and more. When it comes to newer systems, such as the Dreamcast or the PSP, the performance largely depends on the game you pick. While Tekken, Dark Resurrection from the PSP works without any major hiccups, more complex games like Crazy Taxi 2 can experience some slowdowns during gameplay, but still is completely playable. That's just how it is. And yes, you won't be able to enjoy PS2 games on this system. 4. Flawless Handheld PlayStation 2 Experience I strongly recommend the Steam Deck. Check out my hands-on review here. Steam Deck. Our review after one year, is it still worth it? And yes, there are thousands upon thousands of games preloaded onto the device if you opt for an option with game files already on it, which is pretty much a tradition when it comes to Chinese retro gaming handhelds at this point. Even if you decide not to import any of the game ROM files you own onto the R36S, you'll have plenty of content to check out either way. Speaking of the OS, there really isn't much to be said here. Arc OS, a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, which the R36S uses by default, is one of the best operating systems for handheld retro console emulators, and it's still updated quite frequently with new features and emulator performance tweaks. R36S uses a 3.7V 3200 mAh ion battery, Type 804066, connected to its motherboard, via the standard 2-pin JST 1.25mm connector. It's charged using a USB cable, connected to the USB-C port labeled DC which you can find on the bottom of the device. I have to say that I am really impressed by this little device. The display is vibrant, sharp and clear. Best I've used to date. The device feels great in hands and isn't too heavy to comfortably carry around. Arc OS is a great piece of software which is a pleasure to use, and it's constantly updated with new features. Analog sticks feel great and they are inset which makes transporting the device easier. The mono speaker quality is quite good, and there is a 3.5mm audio jack output on the device. There are thousands of games already preloaded onto the system by default. Adding new games and ROMs is extremely simple. Hope you enjoy this video. Have a nice day. Hello. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.